Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at manscaped.com. Our long-term friends want to remind you that April is National Cancer Awareness Month. Every hour, every day, one man is diagnosed with testicular cancer, one of the most common forms of cancer for anybody between the ages of 15 and 35 years of age. And as somebody who's lost quite a few people to cancer, I am one of the people that's gonna stand up and be very, this is a personal fight for me. So ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped being one of our long-term sponsors, I'm glad to say that they are partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society. And of course, if you're using Manscaped to trim the hedges down there like I am, Manscaped is now officially helping to release one of their limited edition 10,000 only Manscaped Lawnmower TCS 4.0 trimmers. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, these are special collectibles. Manscaped also wants to remind you beyond just looking and getting interested over the Manscaped TCS 4.0 to actually do some easy once a month routine self checks at home. And of course, if you feel that you are somebody that's susceptible to cancer in general, please go to a doctor and get yourself checked as early as you can. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped doesn't just take shaving balls seriously. It's, it's, it's a funny meme, but they're also there to make sure that those balls are safe for decades to come. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped will be donating $25,000 through their long-term partner at the Testicular Cancer Society to help anybody impacted by testicular cancer. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can help purchase the special edition TCS 4.0 lawnmower with that beautiful skin safe technology to help support the cause. And if you want more information on how to perform simple routine self checks at home, you can go to manscaped.com slash TCS. And of course, as always, you can use our promo code SOG for 20% off and free international shipping at manscaped.com. So yeah, join the movement today, trim those hedges, and make sure that pair is safe for decades to come. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I made my own VPN again, but better. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the Muda VPN 2 video is here. Now about a year ago, over a year ago, I made a video where, where I titled it, I made my own VPN. And basically in there, I went to Google Cloud, I provisioned a virtual private network within there, and I basically used it as my own personal little VPN, a little note to connect through. Now, ever since then, the process has kind of changed, and the reason why I never really continued with that video is obviously I was taking part of a service where I was on a free trial, and I was spending money, and I wanted to see, what can we do this entirely for free? So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can. Now, to understand, this is not going to be the private VPN out there. To understand, VPN companies come in all forms, shapes, and sizes. And buying a VPN typically involves you actually researching it. Anytime we get a sponsorship, I pretty much go with the sworn affidavit of the company's CEO and CTO to pretty much promise me that they're not harvesting user data, that they are not storing, you know, data within hard drive caches, and they're not reporting data to like alphabet agencies. When you're buying a VPN, you want to buy it in a country where they don't have to retain your logs, where they don't use hard drives, they use RAM-based servers, so as soon as you're done using their service and they power off their hardware, all of your data goes bye-bye. So again, there are different types of VPNs. A lot of the VPNs that you get advertised on YouTube, like Express, Nord, um, Surfshark, uh, whatever service you'll find out there from your favorite YouTuber, typically are okay. They're designed for you to obfuscate your IP address. And if you ask me, that's pretty much what I use a VPN anyways, to pretend that I'm operating from the United States or when I'm playing a video game which leaks my IP address, I can just sit behind a VPN IP address and nobody's going to be DDoSing, attack, DDoSing me when I'm live streaming or doing anything important. So that's pretty much why I use a VPN service. Now, if you want super privacy, there are services like Molvod VPN, which are totally anonymous as far as I understand. And if you want to know more about that, I'm going to reference you a channel known as Mental Outlaw. He's a great YouTuber and he's very OPSEC and privacy focused. What we're looking at here today is Muda VPN 2, mostly designed for you to have your own little service and uh, not so much so that you hide the shadier things that you're doing on the internet, but just have a little VPN, a node that you can connect through and obfuscate your IP. Think of a VPN like this as just one notch in your belt to obfuscate your personal information. Think of it like a node, if you will, that you're just connecting through that's hiding your IP address from all the other, you know, agencies out in the world, or sorry, all the other, you know, websites out in the world. So again, that's pretty much what we're getting down to. Now for this, we're going to be going to a website known as 
uh, Oracle Cloud, which is where we're going to be starting this up. So go to Oracle Cloud, oracle.com uh, slash cloud. It'll basically route you to your country. And over here, you want to try OCI for free. Now over here, when you sign in to Oracle Cloud, or sorry, not sign in, start for free, you basically give them your country, you give them your first, last name, your email address, you fill out your address, and you're going to need a credit card just so they do a check to make sure you're actually a real person and not somebody creating a spam account. Understandably, this is a cloud infrastructure service meant for developers, meant for people hosting services, so on and so forth. Once you've done that, you'll be treated to your brand new Oracle account, ladies and gentlemen. And what does that look like? Well, this is it, buckos. You can see that my account is over here. I've spent zero dolens, and I'm gonna make sure we spend zero dolens. So how do we get started with our own little VPN service? We're gonna be making a virtual machine on their cloud that's going to be running a VPN server that we're going to connect to and use from any device that we have. So when we're on their website, first thing we want to do is we want to click the little, uh, you know, uh, configuration box up here. We want to basically search for compartments. Uh, if not, you can just put it in the search bar. So go to compartments and you want to create a compartment. So over here, you give it a name. So you can call it VPN, if you will. Give it a description and you want to make sure that it's part of your parent compartment. So it'll be like your name, your username and the word root. Now, of course, you can add namespaces. I wouldn't. And you can create that compartment. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do this step. Now, of course, the compartment that I have here is VPN Demo 2, just for this video. Now, once you've created a compartment, it's time for you to actually create the VPN server. So it's up here in the search bar, you type in OpenVPN, and it's going to show you this marketplace, OpenVPN Access Server BYOL. So you're gonna click there, and you're basically going to choose version 2113, so the default, and you're going to put it into its own compartment. Whichever one you made, you're going to select that. So I have VPN Demo 2, yours might be named something else. So click on that, make sure I have reviewed, and of course this is zero dollars and zero cents per hour for the OCPU. So again, launch the instance and let's get started. So of course we can name our instance uh, VPN Server, if you will. And of course, VPN Demo 2 is where you want to get into. Now, this is where the real, I guess you could say, cream comes into, okay? So in placement, you want to make sure that you can create an Amphir A1 Compute instance in any availability domain. So again, it says you can create it in any domain, so one, two, or three. Again, it really doesn't matter which one you pick, just go with two, or one, or three. Whatever is default is probably the better option as long as you are part of the always free package. Now, of course, you can skip, skip security. When you get to image and shape, click edit here. And of course, down into this section with shape, you wanna to go to change shape if you need to. You wanna make sure it's a virtual machine, not bare metal, because we're trying to keep the free option. Now here, you wanna to go to specialty and previous generation. And down here, you'll find something known as VM standard E21 micro, which is always free. So they gave you a network bandwidth of 48.48 gigabits per second, which is not bad for our purposes, a maximum VNIC of one block storage only, and the process is a two gigahertz AMD Epic 7551. Again, it's not the most powerful virtual machine you're making, but remember, you're only running network through this, not that big of a deal. And uh, once you're done here, go to networking, hit edit, and you want to create a new virtual cloud network. So again, we're gonna call this VCN-1, and I'm gonna call this subnet-1, all right? Just to make it a little bit easier for me to read and for the video. Uh, again, yours might be named something else, but keep it like this. So again, you wanna create that in your new demo compartment like so. You wanna make sure the CIDR block reads 10.0.0.0 slash 24, and assign a public IPv4 address. You wanna make sure all of this is there. Now, when it comes to SSH keys, you want to make sure you have an SSH key. Don't make sure, make sure you don't go without one. Keep a key just for extra security. Now, in this case, you want to save your private key. So download that somewhere into its own folder. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop called uh, VPN test. And inside here, I'm going to save that key. Now, of course, for boot volume, just keep to use in transit encryption. And of course, with that, ladies and gentlemen, hit create. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of time, 
but because what it's doing is it's creating a virtual machine, it's provisioning everything. So give it some time, you know, go out, get a coffee and come back. Now, in this case, it's once it's provisioned and it's running, it's going to give you a public IP address and it's going to give you a bunch of information. Now, I might block this out if it's dynamic uh, or sorry, static, uh, meaning that, you know, my actual VPN service is still going to be giving this IP address. I'm going to block it out, but generally it's going to give you this number. And that's a very important number that you want to just write down somewhere, OK, because you're going to be using it a lot. Now, of course, what we're gonna be doing is connecting to the server via SSH. So how are we gonna get this functioning? Now, to understand how it's gonna work, as I have Windows right here, I'm gonna show you how to do this for people that are using Windows, not necessarily Linux like I am, since I understand uh, not a lot of people in the world use Linux natively. I'm gonna to try to make this video as accessible as I can, because I'm a visual learner, and I think videos are important for this kind of stuff anyways. So in this case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna make sure we have our own folder. The SSH key that we have from Oracle Cloud is downloaded and stored here. So again, what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna open up Windows Terminal. So again, go to the Start menu, type in Windows and Terminal, and you should have Windows Terminal accessible. If not, you probably don't have Windows 11 natively, which I don't. But that's generally not a big issue. I think SSH is actually part of Windows. Yes, it is part of Windows. So if you don't, have Windows Terminal, just basically open up a command prompt. So command and just start prompt and you'll be, you know, basically given this window right here. Now again, you wanna to navigate to this folder. And an easy way to do that is basically right click the address bar, copy this, and of course hit enter, or sorry, CD, change directory. Basically right click and paste it and you'll enter that directory. Now if you type in DIR, you'll see your SSH key right there. So to do this, we need to actually enter in a command, right? So once we actually see all of that over here, we're gonna do in, sorry, let me just clear this, SSH for SSH, uh, secure shell, dash I, hit tap, so you basically auto-complete that key you need to connect your private key. And then of course, for this in particular, you're gonna go to open VPN AS add, all right, you're gonna put the add, and you're gonna put your public IP address that Oracle provides you. So one, two, so in my case, I'm gonna enter my public IP address like so. Uh, let me just enter it like here. And then, as soon as you hit enter, it's gonna tell you, do you wanna continue? Hit yes. And of course, it's gonna add things to hosts, and eventually you're going to connect to this uh, prompt right here. It's gonna give you this EULA agreement, type in yes after you've read it through. And of course, it's gonna ask you, this will be your public access node. So generally over here, you wanna make sure that you go with the default. And I'll basically tell you anytime you have to deviate from the default. So here, it's gonna ask you primary access node, hit yes. When it asks you specify the network interface, it's gonna tell you all interfaces, yes. It's gonna ask you recommended choices. Again, go with the recommended choices like so. All of it, you can really just go with the recommendeds. You really don't need to worry and fuddle around with anything. The numbers here where it asks you for port numbers and TCP numbers, write those down, 943 and 443. So again, all of this, yes. Uh, wish to log in, yes. And of course, it's gonna ask you to enter in a password. So you can put in a password. Uh, I'm just gonna put in, you know, uh, Oh, wait, what is it? Your password must contain a digit, an uppercase letter, and a symbol. Now, after you've entered your password or you let it generate one, write that down somewhere because it's going to be the password you use to configure the VPN service. Now, of course, it's going to ask you for your activation key. Leave that blank. Hit enter. And it's basically going to start provisioning the server for you. So wait a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of time, obviously, because we're using a free tier VM as well. So the processing power kind of isn't there. So just chill back, relax, let it do it, come back. Uh, it should really only take a few minutes. So once you're done over here, it's gonna give you this uh, you know, admin UI. It's gonna give you all these passwords right over here. Again, don't really worry about that. You can basically sign out of it right now, hit exit and just basically close your terminal. Now this moment in time, we're gonna go back to the Oracle Cloud uh, provisioning site that we were on, the basically the web service. And we're gonna change a few things so we can actually access the server from the outside internet. So we're gonna be going back to our instances here. So we're gonna click over here, go to our instances. If you don't see it, just search for it. And we're gonna to go to our service, which is, should be running. It should always say always free, just so we're not getting charged, uh, hopefully, as far as I understand. Click on your service over here, and over down into this section, you wanna go and find where it says subnet. 
Now, your name may be different. I made it subnet one. Click on subnet one, and it's gonna take you to this specific setting right over here. Now, it's gonna take you to security lists. So again, what you wanna do over here is you want to actually click on the default security list, and you wanna add some ingress rules. So inside the ingress rules, the first rule we're gonna add here is we're gonna be going into a source type cider and we're gonna do 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 0 .0 slash zero. Now, of course, we're gonna make sure it's TCP. In all, we're gonna do 943 and then comma 443. Like I mentioned earlier when, we were, when I told you to write down those specific ports. Now, of course, you can call this the open VPN ports like so, and then add another ingress rule right here. So in the other ingress rule that you have, make sure it's CIDR, and inside here do 0, 0.0.0.0 0 .0 0 .0 slash 0. And of course, you wanna change this to UDP. So at this moment, we're gonna go down to 1194 for the UDP protocol. Now, as we're doing that over here, we're gonna add the ingress rules, and uh, we're now going to connect to our actual OpenVPN service. So if we go back to, uh, again, our instances here, and we just highlight the VPN service that is running, grab that public IP address, and then of course we're going to connect to it via web service. So open up a new tab, and inside over here, we're gonna do HTTPS colon slash slash, copy and paste that IP address, and it'll tell you your connection is not private. Ignore that, go advanced, proceed, and then you'll be proceeded with this open VPN tunnel. Now here, you wanna enter the username OpenVPN, and then in passwords, that password that we generated or you should have made during the setup, remember that. So once we've done that, it's we're gonna try signing in. We're gonna go to the admin panel. So again, if we're going to the admin panel over here, oh, generally if you wanna to get to it earlier, just make sure you do slash admin just to get there fast. I don't know why I didn't mention that before, but you know, you'll get there eventually. So again, sign in, it'll give you this end user license agreement, read through all of it and then hit agree. And of course, at this moment in time, it'll tell you two VPN connections are allowed. So how do we configure this and set this shit up? Well, first things first, we're gonna go down over here. We're gonna go to configuration. We're gonna go to network settings. And where we have host name or IP address, we're going to put in the public IP address that we got from Oracle. So grab that, slap it in there, and basically hit enter. And it'll tell you update the running server. So again, just click that. It'll basically kill the connection. And of course, give it a few minutes, you'll be able to connect back in, or sorry, give it a few seconds. It'll say your connection is in private. Just hit advanced, connect to it. You'll be forced to sign in again. Now, of course, what you'll notice, now this time in the server name, it'll give you your actual public IP address that you set. Now, at this moment, you're gonna go to configuration, you're gonna go to VPN settings, and you're gonna make sure that a couple things are enabled. So where it says DNS settings, you wanna make sure you have clients use specific DNS service settings, and you wanna go and do 1.1.1.1 for primary, and in the secondary, you wanna make sure it's 1.0.0.1. I'm just looking in notes here that I have. And of course, once that is done, hit enter, and of course, it'll be like, should I update the running server? Definitely update your running server, and it is what it is. Now it's here that uh, you have to make a new user account on this entire uh, OpenVPN server that you've made. And generally you go to user management, uh, you can basically enter any username you want underneath, as long as you make sure that you go into the more settings, set up a password, and you make sure that you do uh, enable auto login. So that is a very important metric. You could also just enable it on the OpenVPN main user account anyways, but there is a safety issue with that. So generally make a new account uh, and that's pretty much all you need. The next step is just downloading the OpenVPN client and then connecting to the server. Now OpenVPN is an open source project and to get it, you're gonna wanna use OpenVPN Connect as the client. So go over to OpenVPN Connect Client and you'll get something for Windows. You can get something for Mac. And if you're on Linux, it's something that you can use built into your network manager. So again, download OpenVPN Connect for Windows and it's time for you to actually use this tool. So once you get OpenVPN Connect over here, click the little plus icon so you can connect. And of course, in your URL, you wanna actually put in the password for your static uh, or your VPN service that you've been using, right? Put that password in import auto login profile, connect after import, and as soon as you're done that, hit accept, 
And ladies and gentlemen, we are connected to our VPN service. God damn. Now, to make sure this is working, ladies and gentlemen, we can do what's my IP, like so. We can just enter that in there, and you can see that this is my IP address. If I'm going to connect right to it, you'll notice that I am connected through Oracle Corporation in Ashburn, Virginia. Again, initially, you got to make sure that when you are making your account, your data center is in the United States or whatever country you want to be hosting from. Now to get a quick idea of our speed test, so to speak, we're gonna go into here and it's going to be less than what you'd expect. So I have a gigabit connection, but if I try testing over here, you can see that I'm getting T-Mobile ads uh, as if I'm American, I'm getting 37 megabits per second. So genuinely, it's not crazy, like don't expect to be downloading anything like crazy over here. But if you go to like YouTube, for instance, you can watch videos with relative ease. So if I go to one of my favorite channels for this kind of stuff, Digital Foundry, I'm gonna just play a 4K video from these guys over here. So I'm getting ads, I'm getting all of that good stuff, but of course I'm gonna hit skip ads. I'm gonna go over here and make sure it's running at 2160, so full 4K 60 frames. And uh, it might be giving me some issues trying to, yeah, actually it's loaded up just fine. So here I'm actually loading up 4K 60 frame video all within YouTube right here while I'm running my own virtual private network. Now, of course, while this video is playing, we can actually access uh, my instance right over here and just see what's going on. So obviously I'm using half of the memory right here. Uh, the CPU utilization does kick up and it's peaking out at like 37%. But again, more importantly, I am using the network like crazy. So I am obviously funneling my network through this service. And as you can see, the video is still functioning as it should be. So again, I can skip through and access different parts. I can go to other areas and I can go to Steam, for instance. I can browse the internet. And the reason why you want to be doing this is again, it serves as a little note to obfuscate your actual IP address. So a lot of people who just wanna use a VPN to watch say Netflix or Amazon Prime uh, while hiding their IP address. Again, this is great for me because if I want to watch Netflix, American Netflix, I can watch it through this VPN service that I made. Again, because I'm not using the big VPN services that have already been you know, blacklisted by some of these big streaming services, what are they going to do? Ban Oracle Cloud? That could be anybody. That could be a legitimate ISP. So in that case, I can browse videos, I can obfuscate my ISP, so if I'm playing games that leak my actual IP address, uh, I'm not so worried because as far as the internet has concerned, I am connecting through Ashburn, Virginia. Now, is this private and is it secure? Obviously, if you're doing shady activities, because you're using an American tech service, uh, the Glowies, the federal agents, the law enforcement can obviously subpoena Oracle for information and they will comply and give it to them. Also, there isn't a degree of encryption that's necessarily going on here either. So you may be like, Moody, you made a VPN service, but it's not ultra private. Again, that wasn't necessarily the point. The point here is a lot of your favorite YouTubers will give you a VPN service. And in a lot of cases, they're not bad services. I do stand by the ones that I've always, you know, sort of, um, you know, sponsored, bar without any drama, you know, occasionally. Um, and the reason I promote those services is obviously they make this whole process really easy. If you want to access servers from all over the world, then yes, you probably want to pony up a few bucks to the big VPN providers. But if you, this doesn't seem overly complicated, and it isn't, then you can just set up your own in the cloud, always free, and just use it to watch videos uh, from geo-restricted services. Uh, you can use it to play games with your friends because the speed that's provided, in my opinion, is okay enough for gaming, uh, you know, with having a little exit note of your own. So generally speaking, I made Muda VPN too, and I think this might be a better option for a lot of people because it is genuinely, from what I understand, free. I've seen people talk about this on Reddit. They've done similar methods through Oracle and Oracle hasn't given them hidden fees or charges, but I would be mindful. I would definitely keep an eye on the billing information to make sure that uh, you know they're not charging me where I shouldn't be. So they'll always tell me that I have a certain amount left in my free trial, so to speak. But again, if you go to billing, for instance, you can just see cost analysis and you'll get a general idea of like how much money you're spending on this. Uh, if they are charging you, for instance, they've told me that I have spent $0 on everything, compute, 
telemetry, block storage, and the network. So again, we'll have to see uh, how much this can cost down the road, but as far as I understand, this appears to be a free way to get a VPN of your own. Would I recommend you do this? Probably, I would. I would definitely be using this to, you know, game with friends, or let's say that I'm using a Rockstar game, which, you know, isn't the best for obfuscating your IP, or really any indie game. I would choose to use this service. But ladies and gentlemen, this is how I made Muda VPN. I know that some of these videos can be dry and technical, but I really wanna thank our sponsor for letting us do this. Um, it's really because the sponsors were even able to do this in the first place. And I do genuinely hope that for some people who came here to learn something, you did learn something. I know that we cover a lot of goofy stuff on the internet from time to time, but computer, uh, you know, science and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> OPSEC and security is my passion. And if it's something that I can pass to you, if I can make you learn something, um, then hey, solid for me. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it for more evergreen content like this. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, I'm out.